The first thing that you should never do as a fish keeper is forget that you're doing a water change. This might sound kind of dumb, it's pretty obvious that you should be paying attention while you do a water change, guys, but trust me, if you've been in this hobby for any amount of time, you know that sometimes you get bored when you're doing a water change, and you leave the room, you go and get distracted doing something else, only to come back to find your tank overflowing, and that's never fun. Try meditating next to your tank while it's filling up. Try watching Netflix on an iPad, but in front of your tank, so that you don't forget what you're doing. It's a lot easier than you think, and trust me, just make sure you stay in front of your aquarium when you're doing it. The second thing that you should absolutely never do is top off your aquarium instead of doing water changes. You can top off your tank all you want as long as you are doing your regular water changes. It just can't be in replace of doing those. To somebody who's new to aquariums, it might seem like hey, the water level's going down, naturally it's evaporating and I'm filling it back up. That's kind of like doing a water change, right? But that's not right at all. When tank water evaporates and you replace it with new tap water, you're concentrating certain things that don't evaporate with that water in your aquarium. Things like hard water chemicals, calcium, magnesium, along with nitrate, right? That can be a problem if it's in super high concentrations. So just by adding new water to a tank, it's not gonna solve your problem or be ever something you should do instead of regular water changes. This is especially important for smaller tanks like my little paludarium thing upstairs that doesn't have a ton of water, it probably only has a few gallons and it does have quite a bit of evaporation. So I am topping that thing off every two or three days. I have to make sure to remember to do my water changes once a week on that thing or else that nitrate can get a little out of control. The third thing that you should most of the time never do is add new fish to an aquarium that has fish in it already. When you bring in new fish from the fish store, they could have diseases if they're brand new to that fish store, especially you don't know what they have, even if they're not showing symptoms. This is something that we're all guilty of doing from time to time, myself included, but you just have to make sure that you know your risks. And there are certain situations where you can get fish that are new to you and put them in an aquarium where you already have fish, and the risk is pretty low. The one thing that I'm thinking about is if you're going and getting fish from, say, a friend of yours that has had an established community aquarium for a long time, all the fish are looking really healthy, and he decides to give you some of them. There is still a risk of introducing something into your aquarium, but that risk, in my opinion, is pretty low. I find myself, even at my old local fish store that I trust a ton, getting fish that have been at his store for a long time. The only problem with that is that there could be new fish that are getting introduced into that aquarium that are passing on a disease, even to an established fish that's been in that aquarium for a really long time. So there's still definitely a risk there. You avoid this problem by simply quarantining your new fish when you get them in, put them in an established tank that doesn't have anything in it or a special quarantine tank that you already have set up if you have a, an elaborate big fish room, and then just monitor those fish, give them medication if they end up needing it, and then waiting until that problem is resolved before you put them in with your already really established, good, healthy community tank that you've worked so hard and put so much money into. Number four, never put your fish tank behind a door. Another one of those things that sounds kind of obvious, but you'd be surprised how many times this has happened to me. I have a lot of tanks that are in kind of weird positions and I don't think about it when I'm setting it up. Hey, where's the door in this room? Where does it open up to? And can somebody bust in here, swing the door open, and have it hit the tank. You don't want that to happen, it could break your tank, it could throw things off kilter and maybe make your stand fall over if you don't have a really robust stand. So think a lot about your fish tank placement guys and try not to put them behind a door. Number five is never add fish that are either new to you or fish that you already have maybe in your fish room to a brand new aquarium without some type of established filter media or beneficial bacteria culture. Doing what's called a fish in cycle can be a little sketchy, especially for somebody who's new to fish keeping in general. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're getting filter material or a filter that's been running on an established tank that has that bacterial population to handle the nitrogen cycle, or if you're brand new and you don't even have a tank, that's totally fine. You can get like some Fritz nitrifying bacteria, pour it in your tank, and then I still like to wait like 24 hours, maybe even 48 hours before I add fish. You can technically add them right away. Those cultures should work if they're healthy and relatively new and have been in the refrigerator. Um, but I always like to give it a couple extra days just to make sure that we don't have any problems. Number six, never go to the fish store without a plan. This is something that 
I've done way too many times. We know what can happen, right? When you go to the fish store, maybe you just got paid. You don't have a plan. You're just going to check stuff out. Oftentimes you leave with way, either way too much stuff, right? You spend way too much money or you leave with something that maybe isn't compatible to what you're going to put it in. It's not the best fish for your tank. You get uh, seduced by everything at the fish store and you end up making a wrong decision. This has happened to me on a few different occasions, especially when I go with somebody else and we're kind of getting hyped up. I'm getting hyped up talking to them about fish. Maybe they're new to fish keeping or they're like a pro. It doesn't matter. Uh, just extra distractions at the fish store, a credit card that you just paid off. You're ready to, you're ready to get some more stuff, right? Bad things can happen in that situation. Make sure that if you're going to go to the fish store, you have a dedicated trip and you have an idea of what you want to accomplish there or else you can kind of let things get away from you. And that's typically, not always, but typically not a good thing. Number seven guys to wrap it up is never buy a tank on Craigslist or Facebook or you know from somebody else. Never buy a used tank without making sure that it holds water. And this is something that can be kind of hard to do because a lot of the times the tanks that you're gonna get from somebody have been in storage for a while or they are you know currently don't have water when you go to pick them up. So it can be hard to prove that and I don't have like a really good answer for you it's a lot to be like hey man I'm you know I want this used 40 gallon from you for 20 bucks can you fill it up with water for me and pretty like that doesn't always that's not always going to be something that you can do right you want to be nice uh, but you also want to get a tank that doesn't leak or one that's not going to have problems so some things you can do one is if you're going to be buying a tank from somebody online that you don't know is try not to put yourself in a situation where you're spending a lot of money on a tank. Like I wouldn't go and buy a 220 gallon tank used from somebody for anywhere close to retail price, right? You want to make sure that you're getting that tank for super cheap, but then you also want to make sure like, Hey, are my red flags going off? Is this too cheap? It can be tough. And I don't have a perfect answer for you. Um, just make sure that you inspect the tank as best you can. If it's a really good deal, don't, be necessarily scared of that. A lot of times people just want to get rid of their fish tanks and they're just going to give them to you for way too cheap of a price. That's not always something to be super cautious of, but there's some simple things that you can do. Inspect the silicone on the edges. Make sure that you don't see a ton of bubbles. That's a sign of maybe the tank's a little older and it's had a lot of pressure on it for a long time. Also ask them questions. Try and figure out if the tank has been stored outside. You know, was it outside during this super cold winter? That's never a good thing. How long has it not had water in it? And if somebody's saying that they've had the tank filled up with water just a few weeks ago and they drained it and they've had it for a while, but everything's good with it, then you just have to kind of analyze that person and make your best judgment. And hopefully you're getting it for a really good deal. When you get it home, fill that tank up with water in your garage or something and let that be filled up for a week, two weeks, a month, however long you want to make sure that it holds water. And this is, again, mostly for like, really big tanks. If it's a small little tank, then chances are everything's good. So I think that's going to do it guys for my seven things that you should never do as a fish keeper. There's probably a bunch of other things that you should never do, right? Uh, let me know if you have some good ones, leave them down in the comments and maybe we'll write up a blog post about it or something, or maybe even make a second video if I get enough. If we can get maybe five more from the comments, I'll do another one of these. So drop them down there and thanks again for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.